unfortunately, this domestic corruption in the USA both persists from one administration to the next and has an effect on international institutions such as the Security Council because of the USA's veto power. The situation is such that special interest donors can bribe politicians in the USA with large campaign contributions and party donations to purchase foreign policy outcomes, including the use of the veto power on the Security Council. This raises the USA's domestic corruption issues to that of an international issue and a crisis of international law. The USA has a particular problem with special interest donors that represent the Israeli government and the military industrial complex which profits from war and weapons sales. an emergency force in the Middle East. Through the General Assembly alone, in accordance with the General Assembly's Uniting for Peace Resolution of November 1, 1950, Resolution 377, Bonti, if the Security Council fails to act, owing to the negative vote of a permanent member, then the General Assembly may act. This would happen in the case where there appears to be a threat to the peace breach of the peace or act of aggression. The General Assembly can consider the matter with a view to making recommendations to members for collective measures to maintain or restore international peace and security. This resolution was invoked only once in unpeacekeeping history, when in 1956 the General Assembly established the first unemergency force, UNEFI in the Middle East. On 29 October 1, 956, Israeli forces launched an attack on Egypt and occupied Sinai and the Gaza Strip. A few days later, British and French troops landed in the Suez Canal zone. The Security Council discussed the matter on 31 October, but no decision could be adopted owing to the vetoes of France and the United Kingdom under the Uniting for Peace Resolution. The matter was then referred to the General Assembly, which met in emergency special session from 1 to 10 November. The Assembly called for a ceasefire and a withdrawal of all foreign forces from occupied territories. It also established the first United Nations Emergency Force, UNIF, to secure and supervise the cessation of hostilities. Following the dispatch of the emergency force to the area, the French and British forces left the Suez Canal Zone by 22 December 1956. The withdrawal of the Israeli forces was completed by 8 March 1957. The creation of UNIF, the first United Nations peacekeeping force, represented a significant innovation within the United Nations. It was not a peace enforcement operation, as envisaged in Article 42 of the United Nations Charter, but a peacekeeping operation to be carried out with the consent and the cooperation of the parties to the conflict. It was armed, but the units were to use their weapons only in self-defense and even then with utmost restraint. Its main functions were to supervise the withdrawal of the three occupying forces, and after the withdrawal was completed, to act as a buffer between the Egyptian and Israeli forces and to provide impartial supervision of the ceasefire. In the event, Anif, stationed entirely on Egyptian territory with the consent of the government, patrolled the Egypt-Israel armistice, demarcation line and the international frontier to the south of the Gaza Strip and brought relative quiet to a long troubled area. The canal, blocked as a result of the conflict, was cleared by the United Nations on Ephi. was withdrawn in May-June 1, 1967 at the request of the Egyptian government, which informed the Secretary General that it would no longer consent to the stationing of the force on Egyptian territory and in Gaza. Something similar might be possible today through the Uniting for Peace resolution even without Security Council approval. If the Security Council is deadlocked due to a veto by a permanent member, the General Assembly can step in and recommend collective measures including peacekeeping operations. However, the success of such an initiative would depend on widespread international support, cooperation from the parties involved, and the willingness of countries to contribute resources and personnel to any potential peacekeeping mission, much like the 1,956 on of operation during the Suez Crisis, the present situation involves multiple fronts, Gaza West Bank, Lebanon, Bank and Lebanon, with potential for an even wider expansion of the genocide. Lebanon is not a state party to the Rome Statute, which means it has not ratified the treaty that established an international criminal court. Ik as such, Lebanon is generally not under the ICE jurisdiction. However, there are ways that I could gain jurisdiction in Lebanon. Lebanon could accept the ICE jurisdiction for specific crimes by filing a declaration under Article 12.3 of the Rome Statute that might be the way to go and may involve reaching out to Lebanon and the ICE to arrange the consent required to begin such a process. Article 12.3 aims to expand the scope of the ICE Statute by allowing non-state parties to grant jurisdiction to the court on an ad hoc basis without acceding to the statute.